Hey guys, it's Rich here with the very last Series 7 Halo 3 action figure review. In this video, I'm going to be reviewing the Orange Security that was an exclusive to Toys R Us. Okay, as you can see, this figure, the Orange Security, it, he does come with two Maulers, which he can dual wield. I actually was able to get it into his hands, both of them, without having to use like a, a blow dryer or some other heating technique to make his hands more pliable. So that's a really good thing because I was really concerned when I bought him that... He wasn't going to be able to hold the Maulers, and maybe if he could hold the one, he wouldn't be able to hold them both. And I'm really glad that they were able to make the Maulers so they could be held by both hands. With that said, the Maulers, in my opinion, are still a bit small, because I would have preferred if they would have fit much more easily into the hands of the multiplayer Spartan, as you can see here. And overall, I think that the Mauler is too darn small to fit into a Brute's hand, which is kind of ironic and funny if you think about it, because the Mauler was a Brute weapon. So if the Brutes can't hold their own type of weapon, it just seems kind of silly to me. I mean, overall, here's a Brute figure, which, as you can see, he's clearly taller than the Spartan. Look at his hands, compared to the human. Way, way bigger. There is no way that a brute would be able to hold this weapon in like real life uh, without having to have one finger like on the outside. There's just no way because of the, how big their hands are. So that's a big disappointment that the Mauler can't be held by them. Another problem, it's not really a problem, it's just kind of, I don't know, I just wish it would. It doesn't have any peg holes so you cannot holster it, you know, like onto the, the thigh of a Spartan or anything like that. Um, another problem with this figure is that he does not have a left leg uh, weapon slot, uh, peg hole, there we go, peg hole. <laughs> he does not have a left leg peg hole. Now, I now have the white armor set and the other multiplayer Spartans that were released with Series 7. Uh, the only figure out of Series 7 for multiplayer Spartans that has the left thigh peg hole is the Steel Hayabusa, which I really thought that the other Spartans would because... The blue Spartan from the Red vs. Blue Guardian 2-pack has a left leg thigh hole, and so does Master Chief from the Spartan 2-pack with, you know, Red Leader and Master Chief. So I don't understand why some of these other multiplayer Spartans aren't getting the same upgrades as, say, Master Chief and the blue Spartan that came out months ago. I'd like to know why that is that they're not using the left peg hole. Now, I would think maybe they decided to get rid of it and, you know, just totally forget it ever happened. But the Steel Hayabusa, who's from the same series as this Orange Security and the Blue Rogue, has a peg hole in his leg. I just don't understand why they're not being consistent. Okay, with that said, I've never owned a Security before, so I wanted to be sure I did a review of it. And uh, I just want to show you the neck movement right here. It has, like, no up and down motion whatsoever. So it's like another Mark V. Which is kind of funny for me, because the only Mark V armor out right now is the Orange Mark V that came with the Mongoose. And he also has terrible neck, uh, you know, as far as neck articulation for, like, looking up and down and turning his head. Now, the security can look to the sides, but he can't really look up and down, so it's kind of like a repeat. So, orange, I don't know how lucky of a color that is. Uh, for the armor, um, most other Spartan armors, except maybe, like, Ava, I don't have recon yet, so I can't do any uh, type of review on that, but Ava, like, cannot move its arms uh, as far as extending them, and that's the same problem with security. Um, let's see, uh, here, the white armor pack, uh, Hayabusa, which, you know, you can change armor pack. Uh, his arm can reach out, you know, clearly to about right there, which is, which is good. That's about standard length. The best one that has length as far as armor is the, uh, Mark VI shoulder pads because it's like they're practically, they, they don't block any type of movement. Now with the security, he cannot even reach his arm, I don't know, I'd probably say about half as far out. So, it's not a huge deal, especially for most people, because you just pose them in your room or something like that. So it's not a big deal, but I just would like to be able to do some other type of, you know, getting the arm out. The good thing is, though, with the Ava, at least the Ava I own, the shoulder pads actually launch off. With the securities, they're on there nice and tight. They're not going to go launching off anywhere. Now, something that I did think was pretty cool, I never actually noticed it before when I, you know, with security arm or anything, is this little thing right here. These little antennas right here in the back. It's actually like a little attachment that is on top of the Mark VI, you know, back armor. Now, I know most people aren't really going to care about that, but I think that's kind of cool that they added that. Um, and as far as the way that all the different armors in Halo have a reason, like th there's a reason why certain helmets exist. Like uh, the Mark VI is standard. Um, Recon is supposed to have better like sensors so it can, you know, it's for reconnaissance. 
But with security, security armor was actually supposed to use for like cops and stuff like that, and or security personnel. So it's kind of weird that they have security armor that goes on a Spartan, but okay, besides that, they actually added this little attachment, which because if it was used by security, like police officers, they'd probably have to have a radio somewhere because they wouldn't have full body armor quite like this. So I don't know, I just think that's kind of cool that they added that because no one was making them add that. And none of the other armors have that as an attachment, you know? So I think that's kind of cool that they built that in there. Uh, other than that, this figure does have uh, all the good stuff about Series 7, which is, you know, they fix the joints. The joints all work. With previous series, sometimes you'd open them and their joints wouldn't work. That's not the case with Series 7. They've all been um, improved on as far as the quality there. The paint job on this figure, you can see, I actually think they did a pretty decent job with it. Um, some, some other figures, like the white armor set, has had a bad paint job, but not this guy. He's actually pretty good. Uh, but he does not beat the Steel Hayabusa, who still has the best multiplayer Series 7 paint job from, like, a long time. I don't. I, it would be tough to beat that figure uh, as far as quality in future sets. But I do really hope they keep up in, in uh, future sets and everything and improve on things. But overall, I would give this figure 5 out of 5. He meets all the standards as far as being able to hold his darn weapons, because I can't stand it that a figure gets a weapon and can't hold it. I mean, that irks me. You don't even understand. It's like wasted money, in my opinion, because if I buy a figure, he comes with special things. That figure should be able to hold the special things he comes with. But this guy can, so that's really good. Um, so overall, like I said, 5 out of 5. Thank you guys very much for watching. As always, you guys are awesome, and see you later.